Good evening, you're watching the News at 6 with me, Shan Russell. The News at 6 is all about the day's biggest developing stories and we'll be filling in on them over the next half hour. But first, the headlines that we're tracking right now. In a landmark move, the Defence Ministry approves induction of women fighter pilots. The first woman combat pilots will uh, join the Air Force squadron in June 2017. Pakistani troops continue unprovoked firing in Samba sector in major ceasefire violations since the DGMO talks, one civilian killed and four others injured. The SIT begins probe into the death of a Dalit boy in Haryana's Gohana district, says post-mortem report indicates death by hanging. Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis in controversy over sanctioning fund from Relief Fund to send a dance troupe abroad. Fadnavis denies wrongdoing. And Prime Minister Modi urges African nations to back India's demand for UNSC reforms, hopes the third India-Africa summit from Monday will bolster India's relation with the continent. The top story this evening, the Defence Ministry has approved the induction of women into the combat stream in the Indian Air Force. Now, this will enable women to take on the role of fighter pilots, the first time when women will be in a combat role in the Indian Armed Forces. The Defence Ministry's statement says that the first batch of women fighter pilots will be commissioned in June 2016. They will have to undergo advanced training for a year before they enter the fighter cockpit in 2017. The first women pilots will be selected from the current batch of the Air Force Academy. The decision to include women in combat roles in the Air Force was announced uh, by M. Chief Marshal Arup Raha on the IAF's 83rd anniversary earlier this month. In 2010, the High Court had granted women officers the right to permanent commission, but it was never fully implemented. The latest decision is a big boost for those fighting for equal rights for women in the armed forces. Now, a day after Haryana Chief Minister Manohar Lal Khatta termed the death of a 15-year-old Dalit boy in Gohana as a case of suicide, the state government has ordered an SIT probe into the incident. Police said the post-mortem, which was conducted by a board of doctors, showed that the boy died due to hanging. The SIT probe will now throw more light in order to further investigate the case. Apart from alleging that the boy was killed in police custody, the victim's family has also accused the police of demanding money to settle the case. After the complaint, two policemen were suspended. An FIR has also been registered against the two. I understand that the judge had done it yesterday. He said that this is a problem of the death of the soul. So now, who is the SIT? Who is the formality? And the people who ask that the CBI inquiry should be done. The AIMS doctor, who is the panel of doctors, जा करके जांच करें और उसके बाद कुछ बोलना चाहिए था। मैं समझती हूँ इसकी सीबीआई इन्क्वायरी होनी चाहिए, बल्कि और भी ज्यादा जरूरी है यहाँ सीबीआई इन्क्वायरी होना, क्योंकि खुद पुलिस प्रशासन इसमें इन्वॉल्व है। पुलिस के लोग इस एसआईटी में नहीं समझती कि पर्याप्त है। एसआईटी पर्याप्त नहीं है इसमें क्योंकि पुलिस की प्रशासन की डायरेक्ट इन्वॉल्वमेंट है इसलिए सीबीआई को ही जाना चाहिए ये कि now, a decision to send a dance troupe to Bangkok or Thailand has uh, landed Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis in the midst of a controversy. Uh, an RTI inquiry has revealed that Fadnavis sanctioned 8 lakh rupees from the Chief Minister's relief fund to fund the troupe. Now, the decision has been questioned at a time when the state is un uh, reeling under a severe drought and its farmers are increasingly turning to suicide. The sanction of 8 lakh rupees from Maharashtra Chief Minister's relief fund for a dance troupe's visit to Thailand has sparked a fresh row in the state. The opposition has questioned the BJP-led government's priorities, especially at a time when the state is severely drought hit. When the Maharashtra is suffering from the drought, many of the farmers have committed suicide. The thousands of applications is pending with the Chief Minister those who are suffering from the chronic disease like cancer, heart attack and many other. He, have not, he had not given 10,000, 5,000 rupees to the patient of that kind. And he has diverted the money to the Sachivale Gymkhana for foreign tour and for their own enjoyment. This cannot be tolerated. 
when the cm office and cm himself takes such kind of a decision then it, uh, you, we can say only that it's very shocking and the, it reflects the kind of insensitivity of the government the matter came to light after an RTI query filed by activist Anil Galgali revealed that the chief minister approved the payment to enable the dance troupe attached to the Sachiwala Gymkhana to go to Bangkok and participate in a competition there. Amid the uproar over the decision, the chief minister has clarified that a portion of the relief fund can be used to fund cultural activities. There are three types of CM funds. One is for drought, one is for Jalim Chiwa, and there is a third fund out of which 25% of fund is reserved for cultural activities. And out of that 25% reserve fund, we sponsor people for cultural activities. कहीं ना कहीं तो ये पद का दुरुपयोग है और हमारी मुख्यमंत्री से इतनी मांग है कि आप इस तरह की नियमों का उल्लंघन न करें इस तरह का जो फंड है आपको किसानों को देना चाहिए सूखाग्रस्त इलाकों को देना चाहिए ना कि डांस करने के लिए जो लोग बैंकॉक में जा रहे हैं उन्हें देना चाहिए 660 farmers have committed suicide in Maharashtra this year alone. The state government has declared a drought-like condition in 14,708 of Maharashtra's 43,000 villages. So essentially, the drought covers 34% of the state. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, Pakistani troops continue to violate ceasefire for the second consecutive day along the international border in Samba district of Jammu and Kashmir. One laborer was killed and four civilians were injured in the firing that began yesterday evening. At least nine posts of the BSF were targeted. Here are the details. Pakistani troops targeted BSF posts along the border in Samba since Friday evening. Unprovoked mortar shelling led to civilian casualties on Indian side. According to reports, one of the laborers fencing the border died when they came under heavy fire. A live shell was also found in a border village which was later defused. The sudden surge in firing across the border has left villagers in a state of panic. Heavy shelling has happened and the first time it has happened in the first time. Pakistan has increased the range of people who have targeted the villages. It was the first time it was happened in the first time. But it was not the first time it was happened in the first time. Yesterday, the one who was killed in the first time, the two of them were killed. And where there were three cities in the first time, there were three cities in the first time, there was a live shell. The BSF-2 retaliated which resulted in exchange of fire for several hours into the night. Friday's ceasefire violation from the Pakistani side came after a lull of more than a month. The centre has a short, tough response to the ceasefire violations. Capable of taking appropriate measures against any mischief that happens from across the border. Incidentally, the ceasefire violation resumed the day Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif blamed India for unprovoked firing. During his visit to United States, Sharif shifted the blame, claiming hostility from the Indian side. The cancellation of the NSA level talks has been followed by increased ceasefire violations by India across the line of control in Kashmir and the working boundary. <clears throat> and a stream of hostile statements by the Indian political and military leadership. The ceasefire violation has resumed after a lull of about a month since the meeting between the DGMOs from both sides. They had agreed to cooperate in maintaining peace along the international border and the LOC. Bureau report, Raj Sabha TV. The Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif wrapped up his four-day visit to the United States uh, on uh, early today. In fact, his visit was marked with Sharif's stepped-up rhetoric against India. He warned that Pakistan will take credible deterrent measures to counter Indian arms build-up and military doctrines. While it promised more credible action against terror outfit, the U.S. President Barack Obama has made it clear that Pakistan should not discriminate between terror groups. While refusing dialogue, India is engaged in a major arms build-up, regrettably, with the active assistance of several powers. It has adopted dangerous military doctrines. This will compel Pakistan to take several countermeasures to preserve credible deterrence. Even before his visit to the United States, Pakistan made it clear that it will target India for the failure to achieve peace in the region. Ceasefire violations coupled with cancellation of talks were some of the points Pak Prime Minister was armed with when he met United States President Barack Obama. A dossier was also handed over to Secretary of State John Kerry that claimed India's involvement in terror activities in Pakistan. 
Raising the Kashmir issue, Sharif said, despite his several attempts, there has been no positive response from India. A normal and stable relationship between Pakistan and India can be built by adherence to the principles of the UN Charter, especially the principle of sovereignty, equality of states and non-interference in their internal affairs and the right of peoples to self-determination. There is no alternative for the two countries but to resume a comprehensive dialogue to resolve all outstanding issues, including the core issue of Jammu and Kashmir. But the centre does not seem to be in a mood to resume talks amid ceasefire violations and terror attacks. Aman and Atangwad can't be one of them. This is the truth. Today, because of these actions, Pakistan has come to the whole world in an Atangwadi country. हर दिन उनके बयान, हर दिन उनकी गीदर भटकी, वो इस बात का प्रमाण है कि उनमें पूरी दुनिया जिस तरह से आज पाकिस्तान को आतंकवादी देश के रूप में देख रही है, उससे उनकी हताशा है। It is Pakistan which has chosen to use terrorism as an instrument of state policy. We hope that this visit conveys a clear message to Pakistan that the international community is deeply concerned about its support to and sponsorship of terrorism. Sharif's remarks also came at a time when he faces protest back home. A video from Muzaffarabad in POK has emerged of a protest two days ago to commemorate Pakistan's invasion of Kashmir in 1947 as a black day. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Finance Minister Arun Jaitley held a press conference today briefing the media on the internal survey taken by the Bharatiya Janata Party in Bihar. Speaking in Patna, Jaitley said that their alliance is leading way ahead of the opposition coalition led by the combination of Nitish Kumar, Lalu Prasad and the Congress Party. We have a sense of satisfaction. Our vision is good. Sometimes people are wrong and they 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 are wrong. कभी उससे चुनाव जीते नहीं जाते ये जो प्रगति जिस स्तर की होनी चाहिए थी वो मॉडल सफल नहीं हो पाया जो गठबंधन भी किया है सच में अंतर विरोधी गठबंधन है गठबंधन में नेता ऐसे व्यक्ति को बना लिया जिसके खिलाफ 20 साल तक प्रचार किया था BJP President Amit Shah addressed an election rally in Chhapra today. Continuing with the BJP's development pitch for the state, the party president said that youth migration from the state remains a major hindrance in development. अगले पिछड़े के बीच में चुनाव है मगर लालू जी कहते हैं कि अगड़ी जाति और पिछड़ी जाति के बीच में चुनाव है और मैं कहता हूं अगड़े बिहार और पिछड़े बिहार के बीच में चुनाव है Now in another election rally at Motihari, Chief Minister Nitish Kumar said that the Biharis are proud of the state's legacy and will have smarter villages than the NDA smart cities. ये भाजपा के लोग हैं, ये स्मार्ट सिटी बनाते हैं, स्मार्ट वाले सुखर, शहर को अच्छा बनाना चाहते हैं, हम गांव को इस कदर बना देना चाहते हैं कि हमारे गांव के लोग ये मोदी जी के स्मार्ट सिटी की तरफ झांकने भी नहीं जाएंगे, ऐसा नहीं जाता। Time now for a quick roundup of all the other national news and updates in nationwide. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal was in Punjab today to visit the families of the two youths who were killed in police firing while protesting against the sacrilege of the Guru Granth Sahib in Faridkot. Kejriwal condemned the police action, saying it was wrong to use force against peaceful protesters. He also visited the Golden Temple in Amritsar. Curfew-like restrictions continued in parts of Srinagar today for the third consecutive day as a preventive measure to maintain law and order. Police and paramilitary CRPF forces have been deployed in sensitive and affected areas to prevent people from coming out of their homes. 
A section of NCT sanitation workers today went on strike, pressing for permanent jobs and timely payment of salaries. The workers protested outside the South Zone office and left garbage piling on the streets as a sign of protest. They have threatened to prolong the protest if their demands are not met soon. The CBI has begun a probe into the murder of a prime witness in a rape case against self-styled Godman Asaram Bapu. Uh, all papers in connection with the murder case were handed over to the CBI on Friday. The victim, a uh, personal aide of Asra Ram, was shot at by unidentified assailants in January this year. Time for us to take a short break. On the other side, the Maldivian Vice President Ahmad Adib arrested on charges of alleged plot to assassinate the President. All that and more on the other side. The biggest meet of the century. Leaders of 54 nations setting a common course for the future. Debating the mantra of scale, speed and skill. Watch the dark continent demystified at the India-Africa Forum Summit 2015. October 23rd to 30th, daily 5 to 6 p.m on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back. You're watching the News at 6. Now, representatives from 54 African nations, including heads of state from around 40 countries and the African Union, will gather in New Delhi for the Indo-Africa Summit starting Monday. Recognizing the growing prospects for trade and investment, Prime Minister Modi expressed confidence that the summit will take their ties to new heights. The Prime Minister also called for all African nations to join India's demand for reforms at the United Nations. New Delhi is set to host the third edition of the India-Africa Forum Summit from October 26th to 29th, with all 54 African countries invited this time. The summit is seen as an effort by India to consolidate its ties with the African continent. Raising the pitch for UN Security Council reforms, Prime Minister Narendra Modi asked the African nations to back India in demanding an overhaul of the global body. Modi said all nations should speak in one voice to make the UN more democratic, inclusive and representative of the current world. Modi cautioned the global body runs the risk of losing relevance if it does not adapt to the new systems in the world, given the present-day challenges like terrorism and climate change. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be holding bilateral talks with heads of state beginning Monday. Expanding trade ties, particularly in oil and gas sector, will be a major focus area at the summit. Stepping up maritime cooperation and lifting the overall engagement to a new high will be the other main topics. The main summit is scheduled for 29th October. I think this is a, a very, very important opportunity to keep reminding ourselves that, that we have a very strong partnership, we have a very strong relationship, we have to keep growing that relationship and to also explore new horizons uh, for, for, for that engagement. India has significant potential strategic and economic stakes in engaging with the resource-rich Africa. There are also key shared interests in battling global terrorism and piracy in the Indian Ocean. India also seeks a stronger partnership with Africa on climate change ahead of the key climate summit in Paris in December. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. And our correspondent Akhilesh Suman spoke to the High Commissioner of Rwanda on the prospects of the future of Indo-African cooperation. What do you expect from the summit? Well, India and Africa has had a long and productive engagement, very vibrant, uh, going into a long history. So this India-Africa Forum Summit is a continuation of that long-term partnership. And what we see is a reaffirmation of the strength of the friendship between India and Africa. Do you think that India is strong enough or efficient enough so that it can help Rwanda and other African countries? Yes, India is a, certainly a big global player and uh, India has been key to the development of Rwanda. There has been already uh, a strong partnership. Uh, so definitely um, uh, we ha India has a lot to offer. Line of credit has been one of the ways that India helps African countries. Do you have any suggestions? I think the suggestion is to continue doing what is being done because this is demand driven. We express a need. India supports the, the need. 
And uh, certainly, I think uh, we need to continue at that level and also including the volume. I think what uh, Africa has a huge hunger uh, for infrastructure development and certainly more financing into that area will be needed. How do you think that India can be benefited through this India-Africa Forum Summit and cooperation between India and Africa? I think there is a mutual uh, benefit, both for Africa and also for India. Trade is a very, very important. India is a, a very important uh, trade partner for Africa. A Category 5 hurricane, Patricia, hit Mexico, bringing with it furious winds of up to 200 miles per hour, tearing down houses in its path. One of the most powerful storms ever recorded, Hurricane Patricia, has forced thousands to evacuate. The storm is rapidly weakening over Mexico, but uh, President Peña Nieto urged residents to keep their guard up. Mexico weathered one of the strongest storms ever on Friday, the Category 5 Hurricane Patricia. The hurricane touched down in western Mexico near the popular beach getaway of Puerto Vallatra, bringing with it destructive winds of up to 200 miles per hour. Thousands of tourists and residents were forced to evacuate and take refuge in emergency shelters. Sí, durante este durante esta noche eh, va va a seguir este lloviendo, va va a seguir habiendo este encharcamientos en, en la ciudad. Eh, consideramos que si ya están aquí en el albergue de una manera este, ya acomodados. A little bit worried, yeah, we're a little nervous. It's probably like nervous, uh, I don't know, like um, curious of what it's going to look like. The heavy rainfall is feared to produce flash floods and landslides in the coming days. The states of Najarit, Jalisco, Colima, Michoacan and Guerrero are particularly in danger. Heavy damage appears to have been avoided for now as Hurricane Patricia rapidly weakened over land, decreasing to a Category 1 storm. But Mexican President Enrique Pena Nieto appealed to residents to remain cautious until the threat completely passes. Lo reitero, aún no podemos bajar la guardia. Insisto, la parte más peligrosa del huracán aún está por entrar al territorio nacional. Además, también se esperan intensas lluvias en el Pacífico y en distintos estados del centro y noreste del país. Moving north, northeastward inland, the U.S. National Hurricane Center forecasts that it will dissipate by Saturday night. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. Time now to take a quick look at other international news stories in Global Buzz. The Vice President of the Maldives, Ahmad Adib, has been arrested in connection with an alleged plot to assassinate the President. Adib was arrested at the main international airport today. President Abdullah Yameen had, na had a narrow escape after his boat was hit by a bomb last month. One person was killed and dozens wounded in a bomb attack on, a Shia Muslim, uh, on Shia Muslims in Bangladesh today. Thousands of worshippers had gathered for the annual Ashura procession in Dhaka when several homemade devices were thrown at them. It is still unclear who was behind the attack. Two bomb attacks in uh, northeastern Nigeria have left at least 55 people dead and more than 100 injured. Both blasts occurred at, as worshippers arrived at the mosques for Friday prayers. It's still not clear who carried out the bombings, but the Islamist group Boko Haram uh, has carried out several attacks in the area earlier. India hoisted the UN flag at all government buildings along with its national flag today to commemorate the Na United Nations Day. The flag was also hosted at the country's embassies and high commissions across the world. UN marks its 70th anniversary today. Well, that's all from Ask a Bike.